we are now going to other diseases and looking if new antigens may be attractive targets also in other diseases. And multiple myeloma is, in my opinion, a very, very interesting disease to go for that as well. It has been shown that new antigens are, in fact, present um, in, 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 in multiple myeloma or at least uh, very well predicted. And, and there have been also data uh, which have shown actually that um, new antigen specific T cell receptors and T cells can be detected on this disease. So I think it will be very attractive to go for these T cells as well, but it is a personalized approach. And personalized approach um, is certainly always um, on the one hand expensive. Um, and on the second hand, it is um, from the timeline at this point, um, still very difficult actually um, to, 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 to pursue because um, the time you need up to the um, actually um, um, time point when you have all your tools together um, will cover still a few months. And um, you need that therapy mainly at um, quicker time points because you start a clinical trial certainly in a group of patients which have an advanced disease and which have a high clinical need to be, to be treated. So um, when you think of a personalized therapy, you, you, you at the moment we try to, to make that quicker happen that you be able to, to provide a specific therapy much quicker, but um, this will still um, take uh, efforts actually up to the point we are there and therefore an alternative are CAR T cells and CAR T cells are very attractive because you can use them also personalized because you need the cells of the patient and, and need to modify them accordingly. But you can you have one construct uh, which you're using actually for uh, for the modification. And we have currently beautiful um, approved therapies uh, targeting BCMA, as you know. And uh, there are actually um, in Germany, we have now approved a BECMA and um, there will be others. Um, uh, Cytosel, we will talk about that a little bit later, will uh, probably come next. And um, uh, we think these are very, very good targets to, to, to be used in multiple myeloma. One caveat and, and maybe um, point which is um, specific for multiple myeloma and which uh, is really also important to address is that we don't see the plateau phase, which we are currently see seeing actually in the lymphoma patients. And um, most patients with multiple myeloma actually uh, get a relapse um, with um, uh, the CAR T cells. And, and this uh, is um, a point where we have to work on and we have to understand why this is. Is this due to maybe um, target reasons that the target get lost from the tumor cells or so? Or has it something to do with the heterogeneity of the disease, which is very um well possible, or has it, has it something to do actually with the microenvironment um, um, in multiple myeloma, which is also very immunosuppressive. And this could also affect actually the longevity of the T cells in the body, and therefore may actually um, um, re uh, may be responsible for, for, for early loss of uh, um, um, transgenic T cells. However, there are many, many approaches, um, um, and not only targeting BCMA, but also other targets, which are very attractive, which are currently followed also in clinical studies. And um, these um, actually um, studies are um, very attractive. One example is, for example, SLAM7, C38, CD138, and um, um, many other targets. Um, and we have to see how, how these clinical trials run and how the patients are doing in order to, to, to get an idea um, if they may be better targets as BCMA or not. Uh, what is also very attractive is maybe if you are using constructs which are targeting two targets, um, so then you have a, a reduced risk actually for a tumor escape. And um, as more um, actually targets you are you um, targeting, um, as better uh, is um, or as lower is your risk actually for, a, for an escape. And especially in, in a heterogeneous um, disease, this is uh, something uh, we should definitely follow. When we look for the data which we have available now for the BCMA cars, um, we do see the typical um, 
cause side effects like um, um, cytokine release syndrome or also the ICANS, um, so the neuro neurological um, side effects. So those we do see and also certainly B-cell aplasia. Um, so we are well, uh, well used to those side effects and I think they are well handleable. Um, but uh, you need to address that by any construct again and, and see what is the specificity where are these targets actually also or maybe also expressed on healthy cells and therefore certainly you have to uh, look for on target of tumor uh, of myeloma toxicity in any target you are investigating and, and this is something we have to do and this is again an, a very nice um, advantage for the neoantigens because the neoantigens are so specific uh, for the tumors uh, that uh, we do expect actually less um, um, or at least in the best case, no um, on target of toxicity, but certainly also bystander um, reactivity of the T cells, which can also result in the cytokine release syndrome, for example, um, when targeting the tumor.